Okay, thank you. On behalf of the congregation of the Vestry of St. John's Tower Grove, first of all, I'd like to welcome you here on this very, very joyous occasion, the ordination of Nancy Ellen F. Gunn. So it's good to have you with us. Before we begin, I'd like to share with you a declaration that our diocese has put together, which you can find on page three of our worship bulletin. We respectfully recognize and acknowledge that we are on traditional ancestral lands of the Osage Nation. The process of acknowledging the land we stand on is a way of accepting our complicity in a process of colonization that removed the Osage people from their ancestral lands. We also make this acknowledgement to affirm our commitment to stand with indigenous communities today as they seek justice and resist continued threats to their sovereignty and humanity. We are also cognizant that we cannot separate the history of the Episcopal Church from the history of colonialism and slavery in the United States. 400 plus years ago, the first enslaved Africans were brought to the Americas. We acknowledge the legacy of slavery in this area and the blood, sweat, and tears of enslaved people that soaked the earth beneath our feet in Missouri. This legacy persists today as we continue to work towards racial justice, equity, liberation, and community here in Missouri and across the Episcopal Church. Thank you.
Oh, you all need to sound a little bit more happy than that. We're here for an ordination. <laughs> Good evening. Good it's a joy to be with you this evening as we celebrate Nancy's ordination, as we celebrate the gift of the church. As we gather in this sacred space, I invite you to take a moment in silence to center ourselves on the one who gathers us here today, Christ Jesus, our Savior. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and creator of all. My sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, whose beloved Son, Jesus Christ, bless the pure in heart. Grant that we, together with your, so with your servant, John Cassian, and in union with his prayers, may ever seek the purity which, with which to behold you as you are, one God in trinity of persons, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers that we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. reading from the second book of Kings. Can you hear me? When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, please tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But then he could no longer see him. He grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where, the Lord, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha, Elisha went over. When the company of prophets who were at Jericho saw him at a distance, they declared, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my sovereign, and bless your name forever and ever. Great are you, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and how you tell of your greatness. They shall punish 
A reading from John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Darkness. 
and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Well, it is a good evening for an ordination, don't you think? <laughs> this has been a day long in coming. This has been a long journey, and it comes to an end tonight, and actually it doesn't. The journey continues. This is your waypoint, Nancy, on a journey that you have encountered God, and you will continue to encounter God. Tonight, the church celebrates not just Nancy's ordination, but will remember John Cassian, whom I am sure is a household name to all of you. So in case you didn't know anything about John Cassian, John Cassian is perhaps the founder of the modern monastic community. He lived back in the early 300s and died around 435, but there's this wonderful story of John being sent from Constantinople to Rome to go visit with the Pope to plead the case of his bishop, John Chrysostom. And as he's making his way to Rome, he gets in line with all of these pilgrims. So he's walking with all these people, and he's listening to their stories, and he's hearing all of how, about their lives and the things that's going on, and he holds on to those stories. And the story goes that he has, on the walk, managed to accumulate all this dust all over his clothes. And so when he gets his audience with the Pope to plead his case for his bishop, he looks like a beggar. He looks like someone who got dragged off of the street. And so what does the Pope do with a person who looks like a beggar sent to plead the case for their bishop? Well, the Pope begrudgingly ordains him and makes him a priest. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> no commission on ministry, no psychological testing. You look like you should be, and so the Pope ordained him and made him a priest right then and there. We're going to kind of do something like that tonight, but the thing I love about the story of John Cassian is that he looked and smelled and acted like a beggar. He looked and acted like the thing we often try to avoid as much as possible. And because of that look, God used him to be a voice, a presence to those in the world. He went on to found all kinds of monastic orders particularly for those who would interact and take good care of the poor and the neglected. I think he's a really good role model for what a modern priest should look like. Back in 2015, when Pope Francis was elected, someone asked him, what do you think would be the best advice to give to someone who is being ordained? And he said, priests should be shepherds that smell like sheep. I love that image. I don't know about you, but I grew up around sheep, and I will tell you sheep are dumb. They are dumb and they are smelly. I would own dumb is with too nice a word. They are stupid. <laughs> And they're smelly, but I love the image of that the shepherds should smell like the sheep. Because exactly it means that we should be out in the world with the folks who are having a hard time, with those who are in pain, with those who are hurt, with those who are hurting. We should smell like sheep. We should smell like sheep because the world needs us to smell like sheep. The days of the priest, the days of the ordained person being in their library, studying theological terms, is lovely and wonderful and no longer needed. We need shepherds who can be out there with the sheep, willing to lay down their lives, if necessary, towards the kingdom of God. 
This evening, our gospel is perhaps one of the most well-known and yet one of the most misunderstood gospels. It begins in the beginning. It takes us back to that primordial time when God says, let there be. It is the creation of the word becoming flesh. It is the Christmas story. But there are no shepherds, there are no beatific angels singing glory and going, ah. John gives us none of that. John simply says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And ever since that moment, we have been doing the best that we can to try to clean up Jesus. We always somehow try to make him this respectable guy who hung out in the right crowd. And as Archbishop Desmond Tutu is fond of saying, God has appallingly low standards. So why do we keep trying to clean Jesus up? Why do we somehow try to think that Jesus must be this perfect, pristine image of the Good Shepherd holding what is often cute sheep? If you spend any time around sheep, there are a lot of things. Cute is not one of them. But I think our world needs a Jesus who is rusty and musty and smells like sheep. Our world needs a Jesus who can show and reflect the pain and the hurt that we all experience throughout this life. If we clean this Jesus up too much, we run the risk of making him so heavenly that he is no earthly good to us or anyone else. The challenge for us and the church is to recognize, like John Cassian, that Jesus walks into our doors, into our lives, and the messiness, and the hurt, and the pain. That Jesus will enter into our lives and the people that we least expect. Mother Teresa reminded us that we can only love God as much as we like the person we love the least. I think that bears repeating. We can only love God as much as we love the person we like the least. God help us all. But the thing is, we are called in this time, in this place, to smell like sheep. To follow a dirty Messiah who had the nerve the nerve to hang out with prostitutes and tax collectors and all the wrong people in our world. And see, what you were called into in this priesthood is not to have authority over anyone, but to smell like sheep. You're called to walk alongside the people that you have been called to serve. You are called to be, in many ways, the good news that they need to hear and see that you need to be. But remember, this is not about you. If you remember nothing from this sermon tonight, remember this isn't about you. Your priesthood, like all of our priesthoods, both the priesthood of the ordained and the lay, is a borrowed ministry. We borrow our ministry from those who come after us because it is not alone from those who came before. Our ministry is a borrowed ministry. We will plant seeds that we will never see the trees that grow. We will harvest fruit from trees that were planted well before we were born. We can only borrow this ministry to go forward into the world. For the rest of us, it means that there is no place that we can go, that we cannot go, where we will not find and discover God. It means that there is no person outside the realm of God's love that we are not called to minister and walk alongside because our world demands that we smell like sheep. 
to smell like sheep means that we must be out in the wrong parts of, of our city and in our town, that we must hang out with the wrong people because only those people who remind us that God is a God who is incarnate in even the least of these. The Word became flesh. God came and dwell among us to remind us that even in those people that we cannot stand, that God's love is called to be made manifest today, tomorrow, and every day. Our world needs us to be and to share the good news that is found in following this itinerant preacher who says to us that we must be good shepherds. That does not mean that our work will be easy. There will be days, Nancy, there will be days that you will walk into your office and you will slam the door and you will say, I am done, D-O-N-E, exclamation point. It is on that day that I want you to remember that you were called to smell like sheep. You were called also to love God's people. You won't always like them, but love them. Love them with every bit of your being. Love them when they call you everything but a beloved child of God. Love them when you feel as though you can't love them. Because in doing so, you remind them and yourself that you, call, you follow a God who will always, always be about the business of loving us, of loving us even when we feel as though we are unlovable. Remember that you are called with this borrowed ministry of priesthood to be a shepherd to the people of God. And if a day goes by that you forget that, I will find you. I know where you live. I know where you worship now too. <laughs> Love these people that God has called you to serve. Smell like sheep. Keep in everything that you do that love of Christ that called you from your birth always before you. Knowing that the road may be rocky and the mountains may be high and the valleys may be low, but that Jesus that we always try to clean up will be your companion every single step of the way. Nancy, please stand. My charge to you is this. Priestly ministry is not about you. It never is. It must always be grounded and centered and pointing towards Christ Jesus, our great shepherd. Do not ever let a moment go by where you think that standing behind that altar is about you. It is not. It must always point to, one, to the one to whom we follow. It must always be about the sheep. It must always be about sharing God's blessing, God's hope, and God's desire for this world, because our world is in need of hope, but more especially in need of love. Be about the business of love. Remember that your priestly leadership is borrowed, not owned. You do not own this priesthood. You borrow it from those who will come after you. Take good care of the ministry that you have been entrusted. Priestly ministry means that you will always follow and sometimes lead. It means that you will always follow Christ and do the best to pass in your life so that you may lead God's people closer to the heart of God. And lastly but not least, remember that there is no place no person, no individual, no institution that you may ever go to where the love of God is not already present. 
Do not for one moment think that you carry God's love to that place. God's love is already there. Your job is to point out God's love already present wherever you may go. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may you remember that you are called to smell like sheep in this borrowed ministry from Christ our Good Shepherd. Amen. Your sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, all the ministries of the church are grounded in holy baptism, through which we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to represent Christ and his church, to bear witness to Christ, and to carry on his work of reconciliation in the world, and to take our place in the life, worship, and governance of the church. I call upon you, therefore, to proceed with the rite of ordination, to renew the baptismal covenant, which is the foundation of the church's ministry. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God and the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. How will you connect to Christ in community? With God's help, I will continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers. How will you resist evil and turn to Christ? With God's help, I will persevere in resisting evil, and whenever I fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. How will you show Christ in your life? With God's help, I will proclaim by word and example the good news of God found in Jesus Christ. How will you seek and serve Christ in your life? With God's help, I will seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving my neighbor as myself. How will you work for the reign of Christ? With God's help, I will strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. May Almighty God, who through Jesus Christ our Lord has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by God's grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Congregation, please be seated.
Church of God, on behalf of the clergy and people of the Diocese of Missouri, we present to you Nancy and Olivia to be ordained a priest in Christ's holy Catholic Church. Has she been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe her manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that she has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe her qualified for this order. My sister, will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so, and I solemnly declare that I do believe the holy scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the word of God, and to contain all things necessary to salvation, and I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. Please sign this declaration. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Nancy Ellen Emil Gunn for ordination to the sacred order of priests. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not, should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Nancy be ordained a priest? Will you uphold her in this ministry? We will. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in you, the Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you, O Trinity, are one. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, especially Joseph, our president, Michael, our governor, and the mayors of the communities represented here, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, the unhoused, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they must have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary the God-bearer, blessed John Cassian, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. God of unchangeable power and the eternal life, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things that have grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Nancy, my sister. The church is the family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord, and to share in the renewing of his world. Now you are called to work as a pastor, priest, and teacher, together with your bishop and fellow presbyters, to take your share in the councils of the church. As a priest, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ and to fashion your life in accordance to its precepts. 
you are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, to declare God's forgiveness to penitent sinners, to pronounce God's blessings, to share the administration of holy baptism, and to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's body and blood, and perform the other ministrations as entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace, and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and the life to come. My sister, do you believe that you are truly called by God and His Church to this priesthood? I believe I am so called. Do you now, in the presence of the Church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? Will you be diligent in the reading and study of Holy Scripture and in seeking the knowledge of such things as, will, as may make you a stronger and more able minister of Christ? I will. you endeavor so to minister the Word of God and the sacraments of the New Covenant that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received? I will. Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the family of God. I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your family and the community in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. Will you persevere in prayer both in public and in private, asking God's grace both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God through the mediation of Jesus Christ and through the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them.
God and Father of all. We praise you for your infinite love in calling us to be your holy people in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many brethren and the head of the church. We thank you that by his death he overcame death, and that having ascended into heaven has poured his gifts abundantly upon your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry and the building up of his body. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Nancy, Fill her with grace and power, and make her a priest in your church. May she exalt you, O Lord, in the midst of your people, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. Boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation, and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Make her a faithful pastor, patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things, she may serve you without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Take the yoke of Christ, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Receive the priestly garment, which symbolizes charity. For God is well able to give you an increase in charity and a perfect work. Vouchsafe, O God, to consecrate and sanctify these hands with this unction and by our blessing, that whatsoever they may bless may be blessed, and whatsoever they shall consecrate may be consecrated and sanctified. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. this Bible as a sign of the authority given you to preach the Word of God and to administer His holy sacraments. Do not forget the trust committed to you as a priest of the Church of God. Now turn around. <laughs> My sisters and brothers, please greet the newest priest in Christ's one holy Catholic and apostolic church.
just a couple of brief announcements as Nancy, we hope, makes her way back. Uh, again, on behalf of the Vestry and the congregation of St. John's Sorrow, welcome on this very, very joyous occasion. And congratulations again to our new priest. When the service is finished, uh, please join us for a brief reception in the parish hall. Come through this door, and when you get, can't go any further, make a right turn that will take you to the parish hall. So you can express your congratulations and love to uh, Nancy on this occasion. So again, thank you for being with us. Again. Okay. <laughs> so a few moments ago, you promised that you were going to support this new priest, right? You were enthusiastic about it, right? Now you get to do something about it. <laughs> In a few moments, the offering plates are going to go around. <laughs> the offering from tonight's liturgy. Um, goes to be the seed for our new priest's discretionary fund. Um, for those who may not be familiar with the discretionary fund, it is for pious and charitable use. So for helping those who are in need um, and for reaching out for those who may be in need of something or some immediate temporal need. Um, I am told that George Washington was a really good Episcopalian and came to church pretty often, which means that he does not need to be in the offering plate. That'll make sense in about two seconds when you get what I just said. <laughs> but nonetheless, I encourage you to be generous in giving towards our new priest's discretionary fund. So, walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, and offering the sacrifice to God.
My sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel, and to teach all nations, and promise to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices of angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, who in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to your command, O God, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Mary the god bearer blessed John the Evangelist, blessed John Cassian, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children, through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia!
My sisters and brothers, these are the gifts of God for you, the holy people of God. So come to this table. You have been here often and you have not been here in a long time. You who tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. You who are full of faith or full of doubt. Come, this Christ himself invites us to meet him here.
My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Nancy may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, in holiness of life. Grant that we with her may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.